You're listening to episode number 25 of the Keto Diet Podcast. Today, we're chatting about health issues caused by not breathing properly, signs you need to work on your breathing, and the most efficient way to strengthen your breath. So stay tuned. Hey, I'm Leanne from healthfulpursuit.com, and this is the Keto Diet Podcast where we're busting through the restrictive mentality of a traditional ketogenic diet to uncover the life you crave. What's keto? Keto is a low carb, high fat diet where we're switching from a sugar burning state to becoming fat burning machines. If you're in need of keto recipe food prep inspiration, I've prepped a free seven-day keto meal plan exclusive for podcast listeners. The plan is complete with a shopping list and everything you need to chow down on keto for seven whole days. Download your free copy at healthfulpursuit.com forward slash keto meal. Let's get this party started. Hey guys, I just got back from LA on Tuesday morning, really, really, really early. My sister and I went to Harry Potter World and I was exhausted after, (laughs) but very cool. And we recorded an episode for the podcast that'll be coming out in a little while. So very excited to share it with you. The show notes and full transcript for today's episode can be found at healthfulpursuit.com forward slash podcast forward slash E25. And the transcript is added to the post about three to five days following the initial air date of this episode. Let's hear from one of our awesome partners. Instant Pot, my personal favorite pressure cooker, is a partner of the podcast. With Instant Pot, you can make meals in minutes, truly. I was someone who was intimidated by pressure cookers, but I'm so happy I gave Instant Pot a try. It makes rich bone broths, hearty stews, and epic dishes just like your slow cooker does, but a lot quicker. I have the Instant Pot IP Duo 60, which pressure cooks, slow cooks, cooks rice, sautés, makes yogurt, steam and warms up food all in one. As an exclusive for Keto Diet Podcast listeners only, Instant Pot is offering everyone $50 off any Instant Pot of their choice. Simply go to instantpot.com, find the unit that best suits you, and use the coupon code KETO, that's all in caps, no spaces, for your $50 discount. If you have an idea for a podcast episode or want to submit praise over and above the review, which you're going to leave by going to healthfulpursuit.com forward slash review, right? You can reach me at info at ketodietpodcast.com. We have two announcements this week. The first is super exciting and you definitely want in on this party. I'm hosting a huge giveaway in celebration of my upcoming paperback, The Keto Diet. If you head on over to healthfulpursuit.com forward slash keto diet book giveaway, We'll also include a link in the show notes if you're not sure how to spell any of those things or it's confusing or I spoke too quickly um, or you can click there. And we're giving away a bunch of the different keto-friendly items that I use to prepare the recipes in the keto diet from Bob's Red Mill to Nuco Coconut Wraps, Butcher Box, Artisana, Paleo Valley, Swerve, Pacific Foods, and more. Again, that's healthfulpursuit.com forward slash keto diet book giveaway to enter to win and the giveaway will be open until April 5th. So just head on over to that URL and you should definitely enter because I mean, I want a huge package like that. There'll be two winners and it's open to the US and Canada. So definitely check that out. The second thing is that I'm creating a bunch of new content for the podcast and I would love your help. I want you to tell me what content to create and I want you to tell me what you're struggling with so that I can help. Please take two minutes to fill out a quick survey at health pursuit.com forward slash survey and tell me what you're struggling with. And when you submit your survey, you'll also be entered to win a hundred dollar Amazon gift card. Again, that's healthfulpursuit.com forward slash survey. And the link will be in the show notes. So today's guest is Dr. Belisa Vranich. She's a clinical psychologist with over 20 years of experience and has spent the last decade dedicating herself to the study of breathing. She is the founder of The Breathing Class and has appeared in dozens of national media outlets, including The Today Show, Good Morning America, The Wall Street Journal, Cosmopolitan, Men's Fitness, and Huffington Post. 
Her new book is Breathe, the Simple Revolutionary 14-Day Program to Improve Your Mental and Physical Health. I came across her book on Amazon, actually, and when I saw it, I loved the cover and I knew I wanted her on the show. Just the whole concept and the introduction on Amazon was just brilliant. And so I grabbed the book, I read it quickly, and our interview today was so good. She walks us through a bunch of different exercises and how to note where your diaphragm is and why this is even important, why this work is important to your breath. And she was very, very open with everything, and I really appreciate all the information that she shared. I know that if you are curious about your breath, or even if you haven't even thought about your breath, just take a moment, maybe when you're not totally conscious of it, to see how you're breathing. And if you're moving your body in all these weird ways, and it's not just your stomach, or you're having pains or inflammation or adrenal dysfunction, this conversation is going to be so helpful. While not totally ketogenic, definitely something that's going to help in your ketogenic journey with reducing inflammation and making sure that you're having a good night's sleep, you're reducing stress. So all good things. So let's cut over to the interview. Hey, how's it going today? Hey, how are you? Good morning. Well, I'm not sure if it's morning for you, but it's morning for me. Yeah, it's still morning for me. So we are good. It's 11 o'clock. So we're doing pretty good. And I forgot to ask before we started recording, how do you like being addressed? Dr. Belissa Vranich or what's kind of your... So, um, doctor, it's Dr. Belisa, Belisa, but you know what? You can call me, you know, you can call me sugar. You can call me honey. <laughs> you can call me just about anything that's nice like that. And I will respond to you. Okay, yeah. sugar. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, honey. <laughs> for, listeners, for listeners that may not be familiar with your work, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Well, I'm a clinical psychologist and I'm based in New York City in Los Angeles. I go back and forth and back and forth. And um, I'm the founder of The Breathing Class. So so I teach breathing. And although that sounds funny, a couple of years ago, it sounded funnier than it does now. Now, when I actually say that, people have a lot of questions and they sort of perk up and start looking at their own breathing and get really interested. So right now, what I do is I teach people how to breathe. Very cool. It's a really short elevator pitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's breathing. It's supposed to be just breathing, inhale, exhale. And the fact is that we all do it. We all should be interested in it. And most of us don't do it so well. But I've actually figured out how to get a grade for you and then how to fix it after you figure out what your grade is, because usually it's not so good. Mm, and I just like we were mentioning before we started the podcast, uh, I just finished reading your book and it is so truly unique and something that nobody's really talking about is breath. You know, if you're in yoga, you're deep breathing and that's about the depth of the breath conversation I've had in my life. And I've never seen anything like your book. How did you get into this work? Like, how did you see that there was a need for this? So it was two part. One was I went into it because of stress. So I was living on stress and adrenaline. And, you know, part of you sort of likes it sometimes because you sort of, it makes you feel superhuman and you feel super productive. But there's a point in your life when you sort of crash, something happens and you either get sick and you get really sick for a while, or you have an injury because you were texting and not watching where you were going, or you make a mistake. It's just a decimal, but it's really a, a big mistake in the wrong direction. And and that's when you realize that stress is uh, a certain amount of stress is actually not so good and that you're not controlling your stress. It's really controlling you. So I had one of those come to Jesus moments when I found I was not just grinding my teeth, I was really pulverizing them. And it was expensive and time consuming to fix. And now I've got this sexy mouth guard that I wear, but it's under control, thankfully. But I had to address my stress. And the first thing I did is I went to a yoga class, which is what a lot of people do. You know, they either reach for a glass of red wine or yoga. I did both of them. Mm -hmm. And in yoga class, we did these really cool breathing exercises. And I just found myself really drawn to them. I don't know. I love the words, Kapalabhati, Ujjayi. Like, it was just kind of, it was cool words and interesting breathing exercises. And I wanted more. So I went and I just pretty much studied every sort of breathing and read every article I could. And then realized that the type of teaching that was out there, because obviously, Obviously, breathing is not a new thing, and there's lots of people who teach it, but 
the way it's explained is really tough for people to understand. And since my background is in child psychology, I really look to see how it was being taught and why people weren't learning from it. So, which is exactly what you do when you work with kids and then developed sort of my own method, which explained it and used very precise vocabulary and descriptions and exercises that used all your senses so that you could really get it. So that's pretty much where, where it all started was my teeth grinding. Yeah, I grind my teeth too, and it's totally stress related. And I also have a very attractive mouth guard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody needs to do a sexier mouth guard because right? you just look like you're, you know, playing hockey all the time. And uh, yeah, it's not, <laughs> not it's pretty. Not right. Exactly. <laughs> but effective. Do it. If you need yeah. a mouth guard, please wear yours. It's amazing and way less expensive than getting your teeth fixed. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm going through right now. And it's like, whoops, should have got that mouth guard sooner. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you know, we're talking about breath and why, why is it important? Like why is having a good, perfect breath pattern ideal when it comes to your health and wellness? Well, it's the cornerstone of your health you know, period, end of sentence, is that you're doing all these other things for your health. So maybe you're taking vitamins or you're trying to get more sleep, you're trying to eat more vegetables, whatever it is that you're trying to do is great. However, the first thing, the really the, the base, the cornerstone of your health is your breathing. Everything that you're doing is to get more oxygen into your body, right? You work out, you're trying to get your heart healthy. So Looking at your breathing is really the foundation. You can do all those other things. They're wonderful. There's great vitamins out there. Sleeping is fantastic. But you have to be able to breathe well, both the pattern of your breathing, the style of your breathing, just you know the depth of your inhales and your exhales. And we're doing it wrong. It's, ra uh, it's really something that's deteriorated to the point that we're sort of devolving when it comes to our breathing. And you know once you breathe better, it affects everything in your body. So so at the very core, inflammation, so autoimmune diseases, your adrenal glands, your acidity, everything that we're trying to fix in this day and age is directly affected by how well you breathe. So it's really important that if you care about your health, be it your mental or your physical health, that you look at your breathing. More on my interview with Dr. Belisa Vranich after this message from one of our podcast partners. My friends at Manitoba Harvest are now partners of the podcast. Manitoba Harvest, the hemp-based food company, has just added a new product to their already amazing line of scrumptious, naturally low-carb hemp products, toasted hemp seeds. They are whole hemp seeds, lightly toasted and seasoned with either sriracha seasoning or sea salt. They're crunchy super snacks, perfect right from the bag. Each third cup serving is two grams of net carbs and 18 grams of fat. I enjoy bringing a baggie along with me to the movies or sprinkling a handful on salads. With 13 grams of omegas in each serving, you really can't go wrong. Get 15% off your Canadian or US-based Manitoba Harvest order by going to healthfulpursuit.com forward slash hemp and using the coupon code HPTOASTED. That's H-P-T-O-A-S-T-E-D for 15% off, valid until March 31st, 2017. I know you're going to love them. And you mentioned acidity, stress. What other issues, what, what issues can pop up? when you're not breathing correctly? Oh boy. So adrenal fatigue is definitely one of them. If you're not breathing well, your adrenals are going to kick in to try to get your body to get your pH into neutral. So that fatigue isn't that all of a sudden our adrenals have stopped working after, you know, in the history of man, our adrenals are now somehow, you know, subpar. It's the fact that we're either so acidic or so alkaline that our adrenals are working overtime to try to bring us into the middle to have a normal pH. So there's not enough juice left in them to help us with the rest of our lives. So that's that's definitely one core issue. Inflammation in your body and autoimmune diseases, all those things are very, very basic. And if you don't have enough oxygen in your body, if you're taxing your body and there's too much adrenaline, too much cortisol in it, it's definitely going to affect how you process your food, how you sleep, how you manage pain disorders. It's really the 
cornerstone of everything, which is surprising to me because I went into it because of stress to teach myself to relax and to teach my own patients who had anxiety disorders to relax. And then I actually found out that I had to learn about digestive disorders and back health and and sleep because it was something that people were coming back to me and saying, hey, I'm actually sleeping for the first time in, in, in a decade or my back feels a lot better. Is that related to the exercises that we're doing? So you'll be surprised what happens with you now that you finish the book and, and are on a, on a plan, on a workout, you'll be able to tell me what gets better on you. It's, it's surprising. Yeah, it's so cool. And how does someone know that they need to do this work? So I either have folks that come to me or, or, you know, ask me questions when they have a sense that something is wrong. And like, you know, women's intuition, especially intuition about health is, is fantastic. It's so on target. So just if you have this feeling that I can't take a deep breath or I feel like I have what's called air hunger or I feel like my breathing gets stuck on the inhale. You just have this sense that your breathing is not what it could be or not what it used to be. You're probably right on target. So a lot of people that I have coming in or are buying the book or asking me questions already know that something is wrong. So when they actually you know, do the measurements on themselves, they find that, oh my gosh, they're right. Their breathing is not good. And that can be a relief because if you're not feeling good and your breathing is not good, then well, hey, that can actually be part of the solution. So there's actually a relief in finding out that you were right, that your breathing was bad. So, you know, that's, that's where you start off is this sense of something's not right. And then there's very, very specifics. I, people who come in and say, I have asthma or I'm recovering from cancer or I have panic attacks or my doctor told me that for acid reflux um, I sh- or irritable bowel, I should use, learn how to uh, be- breathe diaphragmatically. Can you help me? So the span of reasons that people come in is really wide. Yeah. And uh, there's a little blue box in your book that says got neck and shoulder pain. <laughs> and it goes into Uh-oh. like, and okay, so I just finished writing a book and I've been doing a lot of sitting, a lot of stressing. And I, I do find that I get very air hungry. Like I'll realize, I don't know, every hour or so and that I haven't been breathing and I'm like, <gasps> yeah, <sighs> you know, and, and since that kind yeah. of started, I've been getting this deep pain under my shoulder and I had mm-hmm. no idea what it was. And so I found your book and I was just like, oh, breathing. Okay. So, you know, every <laughs> morning I've been breathing and the pain, like not even going through the practices yet, which I have on my calendar to start doing tomorrow. Once I do the little measurement test, the pain is gone. Like just from just focusing on, okay, breath, you know, I know Ujjayi breath and all those mm-hmm. practices that I learned in India, but just you forget about it. So just the fact that my shoulder pain has gone away just from just Excellent. thinking about breathing, I mean, yeah. the world is the oyster, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to improve so much, I can just see it. And that's, and that's so common because in general, people that breathe vertically use their neck and shoulders to breathe. And whenever you see someone breathing in an ad or on television, taking a deep breath, whether it's, you know, panty liners or, or free checking, they're taking this big supposedly deep breath and their shoulders go up and their chest, upper chest expands. And the fact is that looks good on the ad, but it's actually not a good way to breathe because you're using your neck and shoulder muscles to breathe and they were never meant to be breathing muscles. They're really just supposed to be neck and shoulder muscles. So what you're doing now is you're letting them just be neck and shoulder muscles and you're starting to use your diaphragm to breathe, which, you know, the only reason God put your diaphragm in your body and in the middle of your body is so that you could breathe horizontally. So good. I look forward to see what else, what else gets better on you. Totally. And, and so for those people that maybe don't know where their diaphragm is in the book, you kind of talk about like touching the bottom of your ribs and kind of getting a feel for that area. Would that be fair to say? Like, just so people know kind of where their diaphragm is, because some people might not. Oh, you have, I mean, one of the reasons we don't understand breathing is because we don't understand the diaphragm. And it's an absolute shame because it's an enormous muscle. This thing is just like the size of a, of a pizza. And it's in the middle of your body and it's tremendously important. 
It's right underneath your heart. It massages your heart. It creates space for your lungs to be able to take a deep breath. It massages your spine and your digestive organs. And most of us, it's completely locked up and useless. So actually, if we want to do this right now, getting to know where your diaphragm is and really in a tactile way, in a visual way, being able to experience it is super important. So I'm going to do this with you now is I want you to put your fingers right in the front of your body, stick them in the front of your body, right at the notch where your ribs meet. And I want you to poke your fingers in there. It's massively uncomfortable, yeah. but that way you'll remember it, <laughs> is yeah. that I want you to stick your fingers in there and then walk them around the bottom rib and see if you can take your fingers and almost curl them underneath your ribs as you walk them across. Now stop when you get directly underneath your nipples, okay. all right? And I want you to think about this, is that your ribs are attached to your sternum a lot like handles on a pail. And on the inhale, they're supposed to just gently, just slightly flare out horizontally. And on the exhale, they're supposed to narrow your body. So inhale, they make your body flare out. And on the exhale, your body narrows and your ribs narrow. How so cool this is, is what you can totally yeah. feel it. <laughs> it's supposed so cool. to be happening. Yeah. So keep walking your fingers around. You're going to hit your floating rib, which is kind of cool. It's hanging out there. Yeah. I hit some back fat. I don't know if you do. It's oh, okay. Definitely. It keeps us warm in the winter. Keep walking your fingers. You're not going to feel your, your ribs anymore because you're going to get to a little bit of fat and muscle. So just have your fingers meet in the back of your body and now flatten your hands against your back. You have lungs, like really bring attention to your palms and to your fingers. You have lungs all the way down there. So think about the anatomical real estate that your lungs have in your body. Now, that whole circle that you've gone around in your body with your fingertips, that's where your diaphragm attaches. So now mentally, I want you to think about that. That is a really big muscle. It goes all the way around your body. It's a complete cross section of your body. Think about a Frisbee. That's what is in the very middle of your body. And on the inhale, it actually tries to push your ribs open. And on the exhale, your body narrows. Shoulders aren't doing anything. So inhale right now and try to expand the middle of your body and exhale, narrow your body and shoulders are just still and soft and relaxed. And that's the way you should be breathing. So cool. I mean, you can really feel everything, especially when my fingers were just shy, like right underneath my nipples and like just mm -hmm. shy of my floating rib. I only have one because I'm missing a floating rib on the other side. Oh, but <laughs> you're, you're a unirib. Or <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what it is. But yeah, you can totally feel like everything just expanding. That is so cool to kind of give mindfulness practice of, of where the body should be moving. Yeah. So usually we just, you know, when you think about diaphragm, there's, it's this little red line because when you see you know, anatomy pictures, sometimes they don't even have the diaphragm there. Everybody thinks that, oh, my lungs are muscles and they inflate. Yeah. No, it's actually they are organs and they don't. They're really just like very static sponges that are in there. And your diaphragm has to lower. Like I just said, it flattens out, it lowers, and it pushes your ribs open. And that makes the air come into your body. So if you're not using your diaphragm, you're not getting a really good breath. So we were probably born knowing how to breathe. <laughs> oh, yeah. And actually, in f uh, fetuses will expand. You know, they'll actually practice breathing in utero. It's really, it's really cool. And then when you're, when you're born, you, you breathe well. And it's not just infants. I never use the example of infants. You actually breathe really well and properly till you're about five. So if you have kids, look at your four-year-old, your five-year-old. Breathe. They just breathe fantastically. It's just a beautiful breath. Look at your 10-year-old or your 15-year-old breathing, and it's just a hot mess. <laughs> What, why? why? Why does this happen? Yeah. So think about it. First things that happen, so there's, a, there's about six or seven things that happen. One is that at five and six, you start going to school, right? So you start going to school, you start sitting a lot. And with sitting comes bad posture and posture affects your breathing up to 30%. So that's one reason. And think about us now as adults. What do we do? 
13 to 16 hours a day, you're sitting. And that's probably in the car, in front of your computer, all these things where your hips are rolled under, your shoulders are rolled forward, and you're not taking a big deep breath in. So your posture has something to do with it. So second thing that happens is that you may be really comfortable walking around with your middle being relaxed. Well, someone comes over and either pokes you or pokes someone else in the belly and starts teasing them about, you know, looking fat. So all you need to do is see someone poke someone else in the belly. As you're five or six years old, you don't want to be teased. So you start sucking in your belly and you look at your mom and your dad and they're sucking in their bellies too. And then you look at those ads on TV and everybody's waist is narrow and their chest is opened up. The doctor comes, puts the stethoscope on the very top of your lungs and tells you to take a deep breath. Well, you just think your lungs are all the way up there. So there starts the, the, the misunderstanding that your breath should be at the top of your lungs when it actually should be at the very bottom where your lungs are most dense and there's most oxygen. Wow. Yeah. That training constantly, everything you said, I was like, yep, that definitely happened to me. I totally mm-hmm. like, yeah, I totally thought I remember my first yoga class and she said deep belly breath. And I just like stuck out my belly. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> What does this belly do? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know, belly breath, you bring up a great thing, which is that people say belly breath, but no one really understands belly breath. They're like, yeah, I get it that I should be poking, you know, popping my belly, but, but why am I doing that? Like no one really understands why are they doing a belly breath. And I actually remember I had somebody once say, well, I don't want to do a belly breath because I don't want to get gassy. And the fact is that when you relax your belly as you inhale, the air isn't going into your digestive system. It's not going into your stomach at all. You're just letting your stomach relax so that your diaphragm can then move because you can't actually use your diaphragm when your belly is gripped. So it's just by association. The belly breath just helps you pull the breath down lower in your body so that you can use your diaphragm. And once you do that, it calms you down because neurologically your body looks to see where you're breathing from to see if you're going to be calm. If you're breathing lower, if your belly's expanding, if your diaphragm's expanding, then your heart rate goes down and your blood pressure goes down automatically. In addition to that blood pressure and your heart rate and just being calmer, what other positive effects can people get by doing this work? Your cortisol comes down and all of us are hearing about cortisol and having high cortisol and how it makes you have belly fat and it just wreaks havoc on your your health. So once you start breathing with a lower body breath, once that horizontal breath is that your cortisol is going to come down. So all the basic things that then ripple throughout your health are going to get better. And for me, The idea that it helps with your back, your back health, and especially your digestive system and and your interest in nutrition and your specialization in food and diet, it's really important that your folks know that if you breathe well, you get the oxygen that your cells need to be able to break down those nutrients that you've had. If you're not giving your body enough oxygen, then your cells can't break down all that really good, nutritious, uh, nutrient-rich food. So for folks who are looking at what they're eating and want to eat better and want to digest better, having more oxygen for your cells is definitely important. Then being able to have body awareness for when you're hungry or when you're just thirsty, when you're hungry and when you're anxious, very, very different. And I know you know, I've, I've been an emotional eater in the past as well, is that being able to differentiate when you're lonely or when you're hungry, when you're anxious or hungry, or when you're thirsty and hungry is really important. But if you've been bracing your whole body and you just don't really, aren't really in touch with it, it's hard to figure out those things. So doing the lower body breath, you start getting in touch with yourself and start being able to make that difference of when you need a glass of water or when you really need, you know, an apple and some peanut butter or whatever it is that makes you happy. Mm -hmm. And I think the inflammation and boosted gut health is a really big one for those listening. Like that's, those are two hot topics when it comes to health and wellness. And by just breathing, you know, having that deeper breath and using, not using your shoulders and doing some of those techniques can reduce inflammation, reduce cortisol, you know, all those things that we try to do with food, but you're saying that just like breathe better and it'll kind of just all fall together for you. 
And acidity is one I'm sure that you talk about mm -hmm. as well. And that, you know, you can change your acidity. You have metabolic acidity and you have respiratory acidity. So sometimes I have people come to see me and they're, they eat really clean, just really good, clean diets, very, you know, mindful eating, but they're still acidic. So that's when you have to say, well, let me look at my breathing because there's respiratory acidosis. And it's fascinating to see that you can take, you can use the acidity strips. I like the one that comes in a roll that you can get at Whole Foods. You test your acidity, you do your breathing exercises, and your acidity will change. And you can actually get yourself to change significantly, you know, within a week or two if you continue to do your breathing exercises. It's, it's remarkable, really. Interesting. And in the book, you taught a little bit about the baseline and you mentioned it a bit before. Can you go through a little bit about what the baseline is and explain how that works and how it can be helpful to uh, working on your breath? Sure. So one of the problems with, with learning how to breathe or teaching breathing is that we can't see air, we can't see lungs. We kind of just have this feeling that something is wrong. So one of the reasons I added a baseline and actually a grade as well, it's called the BIC, the Breathing IQ, is because it helps folks know where they are. So I come from a fitness background. So I like knowing running this much time, I'm, I'm pumping this much weight, and I want to get to an, a bigger number or a smaller number depending on what I'm doing. So the breathing IQ gives you a sense of what grade does my breathing have? Is it as bad as I think? Is it worse than I thought? Or have my exercises helped my breathing from last week to this week? So you're, what you're going to do is that you're going to look at the style of your breathing and also a number, which is called your vital lung capacity. And that's a number where you look at how much you're using your diaphragm in inches. And there's a calculation that you do and you end up with a grade. But the other things I like people looking at is, is their acidity, their breath hold. If they've been to a pulmonary clinic, they can look at what's called their FE. EV or their FVC, which is the amount of uh, lung capacity they have and the lung velocity they have. Just as important and maybe even more important is setting a baseline for yourself. So am I using the breathing exercises to help myself with cravings, with pain, with sleep? Like, What's my baseline for the reasons I'm doing this? Is it checking to see how my acid reflux gets better? my brain fog. So really doing, having a baseline for I'm at one or two, or I'm sort of average, or my pain is a little bit high, higher than I'd like it to be, then doing the breathing exercises and seeing those numbers change is really important because they change really almost immediately. That's so interesting. I can't wait to get a measuring tape. <laughs> yeah. <started. laughs> yeah. More on my interview with Dr. Belisa Vranich after this message from one of our podcast partners. The show is partnered up with Paleo Valley, the makers of the only 100% grass-fed and finished fermented beef stick. Each stick contains 1 billion probiotic CFUs. We all know how important fermented foods are to the health of our gut and the strength of our immune system, especially during cold and flu season, as well as boosting our energy throughout the winter months. Chowing down on Paleo Valley's fermented beef sticks provides your body with all of the beneficial bacteria it loves in one convenient little beef stick. Their gut-friendly sticks are gluten-free, soy-free, dairy-free, GMO-free, freaky chemical additive dye and preservative-free, as well as being 100% free from carbs and sugar, and made with the highest quality ingredients. Exclusive to listeners of the show, receive instant savings of 20% off Paleo Valley fermented beef stick snacks by going to paleovalley.com forward slash keto. And if your jaw is just tired thinking about beef jerky, it's worth noting that these tasty treats are not tough at all, but moist with a little snap. The summer sausage flavor even tastes like those hickory summer sausages, but without the gunk. Seriously delicious. Again, that's paleovalley.com forward slash keto for an instant 20% off savings. And some of the breathing techniques, like you offer a couple in the book, you know, you taught, you walked me through how to kind of find the diaphragm. What's your main go-to breathing technique that you personally enjoy doing? Is there like one technique that you personally 
love or do you kind of have to do all of them in the book in order to get the benefits? No, no. I mean, I'm a big believer in, you know, yeah, buy the book if if you want to, share it with your friends, go ahead, take it out of the library, you know, whatever you need to do. I want people to learn how to breathe. They don't necessarily have to buy the book. It's nice if they do. It helps me pay my rent. However, I just want people breathing better and and empower I want them to be empowered by their breath and for them to sort of get hope in in the beauty and the perfection of their way their body works, you know, if they let it and if they have this information. So the core breath, the most important breath, I'll give it to you now, is that you sit and I actually want you to separate your legs so they're a little bit further than hip width apart. So you're sitting in your chair, legs are a little bit more than hip width apart. And on the inhale, I want you to let your belly go, put your hands on your belly, and I want you to pretend that you remember when you were pregnant, if you've had children, or you can call out your your inner Santa Claus and just let your belly go, tip forward and put your belly on your lap. So inhale, put your belly on your lap or as close to your lap as you can. And now on the exhale, lean back, curl your hips under you as if you're leaning back on the sofa, watching TV, that kind of curled back and exhale. So forwards again, relax your belly, bump your butt back. So it's like you're getting selfie butt, I call it. Selfie butt or Valsalva if you squat. Belly on your lap. Really relax it. Let it drop into your hands. And now on the exhale, roll your hips back. Shoulders are not moving at any part of this. Roll your hips back and your belly button should be getting closer to your spine. Really narrow your body. Exhale all the way out. Squeeze. Then tip forwards again. This time see if you can expand a little bit more. So belly widen, sides widen. See if you can actually sip in some air and make that belly bigger. And believe me, although you may be aghast at, my gosh, he wants me to make my belly breather, this is just the introductory breath. Later on, you won't have to do this, but while you're teaching your body, while you're helping it to remember how it used to breathe, this is what you got to do. And if you breathe this way, your core is going to get stronger. Just sucking in your belly all the time is not making you stronger. It's actually making you weaker. So doing this exercise, and this does count as an ab workout, is actually going to make your core stronger in the long run. So that way, when you do have to wear that clingy gown on the red carpet, you can suck in your gut much longer and much better. So (laughs) keep going. Inhale, belly on your lap, sip in some air, roll your shoulders. Don't let them move. Make sure they're relaxed and soft. Exhale, tip back. And if you do yoga, you're going to realize that, hmm, this feels like a seated cat cow. And if you do yoga and the breathing's right, let's just check on that a second. When you're in cow pose, meaning that your belly is dropped low and relaxed, that should be an inhale. Now, if you go into cat pose, which is scary Halloween cat, your back is rolled against the back of your chair, you should be exhaling, squeeze. So think about that. This is really a seated cat cow. And I want you to really roll your hips forwards and back so you can feel yourself rolling forwards on your hip bones and letting your pelvic floor really touch up against the bottom of your chair. Then on the exhale, really roll your hips back, tailbone goes underneath you and you really squeeze, belly button getting closer to your spine. So that is the most important breath you can learn and that one will get you set up for everything else. But if you learn one thing, please learn that one and practice it as often as you can. Yeah, I was so I was doing it while you were telling us what to do. And it did very much feel like cat cow just seated and could actually be quite, you know, for disabled people making it easier for them to participate in this sort of activity. Because I know like both my parents are and it, you know, try to be mindful of people and and the accessibility of exercises that I know I did um, a seated yoga class at the Chopra Center many, many years ago, and they did a seated cat cow. And I thought it was so cool because, you know, if you can't get down on your hands and knees, like this is a great way to do it. And it's such a meditative, like I I felt quite meditative when you were explaining what to do with our belly could be a really good way to kind of get into that meditative zone for maybe people that can't 
meditate or say that they can't meditate would that be fair? absolutely and think about it usually in meditation they don't teach you how to breathe they just say breathe so most people that can't meditate it's because they're still breathing in a vertical fight or flight way so you're trying to meditate meanwhile through the breath you're telling your body to be alert well of course it's not happening so if you do that and you focus on the sound of your inhale and your exhale, that is meditating. If you can do that, tipping forwards and back, make your breath really noisy and just listen to the sound of your breath for a minute or two minutes, guess what? You can check off meditated today off your list because you did do it. Mm. Beautiful and way more engaging. I find like it, it's more mindful, even just doing that a couple of times. I feel a lot more relaxed. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's some good stuff for sure. And there's there's a lot of uh, obsession or focusing on detoxification, just, you know, going on cleanses and blah, blah, blah. Would you say that having strong breath and a good breath pattern could help with detoxifying the body? Oh, thank you so much for that question. Mm. Oh, I so appreciate that. So there's a lot of talk about lymph and people don't really know what lymph is. They know it's bad. You know, when you get a lymph massage, a lot of people will go, oh, it was too light. I didn't get it. And the fact is that you have a drainage system in your body and this drainage system gets lymph, which is uh, toxic. You know, you don't want a lot of lymph in your body. You want to be able to get it out. Now, most people don't do a good job of getting lymph out of their body because they're not breathing with their whole body. So one of the best things you can do to detoxify your body is not these super extreme, you know, detoxes that, that folks put themselves through. I really think they're beating themselves up in, in a kind of strange way to put themselves through detoxes that are really grueling and, and questionable as far as your body. I mean, I think detoxing is good for you when it's done thoughtfully and, and moderately, but the extremes that I'm seeing are really crazy. You could really detoxify well and gently, much better actually, if you breathe with your whole body so that your body's getting massaged and you get lymph out of your body. When you're breathing this way that your whole body is moving, you're able to massage your organs and get it out of your body much more quickly, which is why when someone does one of the, the hardcore exercise classes with me, or if you do your, you know, put together your own hard breathing workout, which you will after you read the book, is that you have really moved a lot of lymph out of places where it shouldn't be. Your organs are massaged. You need to drink a ton of water and flush it out of your system. Will you automatically feel better? It's amazing. You feel better really right away and you're not imagining it because you're supporting your lymph system in a way that your body was set up to do, but we stop breathing, right? So we don't do it anymore. But you'll notice when you inhale and exhale the way we were just doing, rocking forwards and back, is that your whole body is engaged. So from your pelvic floor all the way up to your armpits, you're moving, things are getting massaged, and it's the absolute best thing you can do for your body to detoxify. That is very cool. I, in fact, it's so interesting that you say that because I've been going for facials, like I do the silk peel thing every other mm. month or something like that. And it's so great. But after my face has been like inflamed and I actually stopped doing it because I was mm. getting more acne and stuff. So I went to a new lady and she had this whole different pattern of moving the tool on my face and I was like, what are you doing? She's like, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm moving your skin in the way of your lymphatic drainage system. I'm like, of course you are. That's brilliant. And I didn't react wow. to the, I didn't react to the facial at all this time. And it actually benefited my skin. So it's so interesting by just, you know, moving something on your face, just a different way can cause so much more inf inflammation than just, you know, going with that drainage system. So I have no doubt that if your practices and exercises are are focused on that, that you could see some real benefit beyond going on a juice cleanse for yeah. like 10 days. For and, yeah, <laughs> like not my cup of tea. Thank you very yeah. much. That's yeah. really cool. And as somebody who just finished writing a book myself, what was your favorite part to writing your book? And, and oh, what have you finishing? seen? Finishing? <laughs> yeah, totally. That definitely. Finishing. <laughs> yeah, finishing was great. <laughs> Let's see. I mean, you know, when you write a book, it's just you feel like you've had a, you know, it's your baby, really. 
I think seeing the seeing it getting the copy where it's all together and seeing it in a cover and all together, you just don't believe it's such a long, arduous process that you don't believe it's really ever going to happen because of the edits and all that. So finally getting it and seeing it in hard copy just gives you this sense of pride. And, and you know, when you write something with the mission of, of helping people, knowing that it's going to ripple and getting getting emails and calls from people, you know, across the world and, and them have letting you know how it's helped them is just the most amazing feeling. I can't, I mean, I, there's nothing to compare with it to think that there's folks that are reading this and it's helping them and it's getting them set up to, to believe in their bodies again, because in general, I think people are, feel very disempowered when it comes to their health and, and really don't trust their bodies to be doing the right thing. You know, especially women, we just, we just don't trust our bodies because we've been, you know, told not to trust them and we've been so disappointed by them and we feel like we're bad battling against our bodies the whole time. So when you when you give someone the information that lets them know that their body is perfect and and works incredibly well if they just let it do what it's supposed to, I just can't think of a better feeling. Really. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And how how has this work changed your life personally? Like the breath work and how is it? Changed? I have no social life. Oh. <laughs> I actually have maybe no because you're a life. writer. <laughs> I, you know, this is my mission and I have a very little social life and I don't mind. Um, I mean, at some point I'll get my social life back, but all kidding aside is that just the process has made me even more passionate about it. I've had to continue to read and continue to educate myself. I'm doing a teacher training right now. Um, I just did one in New York. There's another one coming up in Los Angeles, then London. Germany is my one um, uh, wheelchair teacher training for breathing in Australia. So being able to teach and being able to develop myself as a teacher has been really interesting. So just waking up and being passionate about something every single day. I mean, I usually, in the past, I've had a bit of vocational ADD. So I had a lot of jobs within psychology, but I always wanted to do something where I had to change and I had to keep up. So with the breathing, I've had to research breathing in, in things I'd never imagined. Like I'm reading a book now on Russian special operations training and how to breathe. I've had to learn golf to learn how uh, golfers breathe. So the amount of work I have to put into it is tremendous and I actually really like it. That's cool. You got to love what you do, especially when you develop that passion. It sort of just comes with it, you know, yeah. when, you're, when you're passionate about something and you want to sit and read for hours about things that people will be like, what, why, why are you doing that? <laughs> like, how is that interesting? <laughs> I feel really nerdy sometimes. I mean, I get excited. I, every time I talk about this, I get this excited. And and it's nice because I have folks that come along and they, they get it as well. And they're just as excited. So it's nice not to be nerdy all by myself. I actually get to be nerdy and, and love the science and teach people who, again, you know, get wide eyed and sort of blown away by it. And it's, it's just so fulfilling. It really is. I, I, you know, feel blessed that I, you know, can do this every day all the time. And, uh, you know, at some point I'll catch up and, and go have a social life because right now just to be able to teach as much as I can and, and, and do lovely podcasts like yours and, and be able to present is just, you know, um, I can't be happier. Yeah, it takes over your life. But when you're when you're passionate about something, and I can tell you're totally lit up when you're sharing this information. <laughs> it's so inspiring. And it's quite interesting how I found your book, you know, I was just on Amazon, and it came up as something recommended to me. And I mean, I've never bought anything about breath or anything to do with this. So but it came up and I was like, what is that? I need to have this lady on my podcast. This uh, is so interesting. So uh, I, I really appreciate you putting your work out there. And congratulations on being recommended yeah. everywhere I go on Amazon. Like, that's crazy. And congratulations so on yours as oh, well. Thank you. Thank relax. You. Relax now that it's done. And, and yeah, and be proud of yourself. Pat yourself on the back. And nice stuff. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. As, as 
I totally understand now when people say writing a book is probably the most unhealthiest thing you'll ever do, but also the most fulfilling. And like you said, just being able to give your knowledge to somebody, even if it's just one person, if you can just change or adjust one person's way of looking at breath, or in my case, looking at fat and eating more fat, you know, that's, that's <laughs> job well done. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for putting your stuff out there. And where can people find you if they're like, wow, she's amazing. I need oh. all of her things. So it's the breathing class because I'm a simple creature and it's just the breathing class or drbelisa.com, D-R-B-E-L-I-S-A.com. The book is Breathe and it's please support your local bookstores by going to your local bookstores and ordering it or going to your local libraries. And if not, you can go to Barnes and Noble or Amazon. And I teach coming out with a, a video class soon. I do Facebook lives and I'm, I'm really good at answering questions and, and getting myself out there and, and being available to folks. So I appreciate you having me on, on your podcast. Yeah, definitely let us know when that class uh, when your video class starts, because I was thinking as I was reading the book, I'm like, this would be great as a video course. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> Baby steps. Totally. Well, thank you so much. I'll make sure to include your book and your website in the show notes, which everyone can find by going to healthfulpursuit.com forward slash podcast forward slash E25. And thanks again for being on today's show. Have a great day. You too. And that does it for another episode of the Keto Diet Podcast. Thanks for listening in. You can follow me on Instagram by searching Healthful Pursuit, where you'll find daily keto eats and other fun things. And check out all of my keto supportive programs, bundles, guides, and other cool things over at healthfulpursuit.com forward slash shop. And I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.